Hello. Um, my name is Catalina. And um, when I was invited by Web Summit, they asked me to come talk about the threats of AI to society. And I said, no, I will not do that. But I will come and talk about the challenges of AI and how to solve them. And not about the challenges of AI becoming too smart and take over the world. I want to talk about the challenges of the more down-to-earth, narrow AI that has already taken over the world. Because there are a number of challenges there. I call them AI impact domains. These are 12 of them. I'm not going to talk about all 12. But many of them boil down to quality and responsible use. In 2014, a girl, 18-year-old girl, was arrested for stealing a bike. She was flagged as a high risk to commit a crime again. She had no record. It was her first offense. And since then, she never committed a crime again. She was black. Around the same time, a guy was arrested for shoplifting. He was a seasoned criminal. He had a long record. He was flagged a low risk to ever commit a crime again. In the time past that, he committed several crimes. He was white. It turned out that the flagging was done by an algorithm, a smart algorithm that wasn't that smart, that wasn't that good, and that learned from data that wasn't that good either. Because remember this, data are not facts. Data is not neutral. Data can be messy. Data can have bias in it. Data can be incomplete. And you might think, well, if this is going to affect the criminal population, then let's fix it and be done with it. But imagine this. What if the same structure is going to decide whether you get a loan, a mortgage, health insurance, a job, a heart transplant maybe. If these systems are going to affect our lives so deeply, then they better be good. They better be beyond good. And that's why we need standards. We need standards for quality systems, for quality data, for quality AI. We need to make sure that they're safe, we need to make sure that they're bias-free. We need to make sure that they're complete. We need to make sure that they can't be hacked. And we need more people at the table, because if you are going to develop an algorithm that is going to send somebody to prison, you might want to talk to a judge and ask that judge, what do you need to make you a better judge? How can I develop that? Which brings me to the second challenge which is AI in the workplace. What moved this judge to trust an algorithm that, like Margarete Verstager said in the opening, did not go to law school over his own judgment to forego his autonomy? Was he pressed for time? Did he have a full docket? And that is something that we need to address. Because there's a lot, a lot of prediction going on about AI taking over our jobs. There are studies that say 9% of our, all jobs are going to be at risk of AI. There's a study that says 47% is going to be at risk of being taken over by AI. And there are people that are saying we are heading towards a jobless future. What this says to me is that we don't know. And yet we talk about universal basic income and robotax. We jump to the end of the line. Well, there is so much we can do now to prevent that from happening. We can have employers and employees sit together and decide how they are going to implement AI into the workplace, how it's going to augment the people that work there, how it's not going to replace the people, but make them better at their jobs, how it's going to take over the dirty work, and the dangerous work so that people can do more pleasant work. People are valuable. 
They can create, create value for your company. You can use them to venture new business avenues. Think of that. Work on that. Which brings me to the last challenge, which is not really a challenge. It's a wrong solution to a challenge that doesn't exist. Do we legalize it or don't we legalize it? And what do I mean by that? There's been talk about giving a legal personality to smart systems. And Estonia is the first country that is really considering this. The European Parliament also made a remark on this, that it might be investigated as a solution. And when I ask people why would we want that, they say, well, if it's going to do something that is beyond our control, who's going to be liable? Imagine this, if a dog bites a child, we're not going to sue the dog, we're going to sue the owner. The dog did something beyond our control, but we still sue the owner. If the child breaks a window of the neighbor with his ball, we're not going to sue the child, we sue the parents. The child did something beyond the parents' control, but we still sue the parents. If the neighbor loses his mental capabilities, we strip him of his rights and we appoint a guardian. And what I'm saying here is that we have very, very robust systems in place, liability laws that have been here for centuries, that have been scrutinized, that have been optimized, thought through. We don't need anything new. But more importantly, our liability laws have a second function. And that is a preventive function. They prevent us from doing harm. The threat of liability prevents a car maker from putting a car on the road without any brakes. Imagine what happens if you take away that threat. What is there to stop somebody from making something that goes beyond his control and that is not that good? If the threat is gone, he might as well do that. I want to leave you here with just one thought that I hope you will remember, and that is human in command. But what I mean by that is we need to have a human in command strategy for AI. We need to be able to command the systems in a technical manner, but also in deciding if, when, and how we use it in our lives our homes, our schools, our workplaces, in our courtrooms, in our hospitals. Human in command. Thank you very much.